coming up on the Sporting Chef. So today on the show, I'm getting out of the kitchen and out on the water, one of my favorite places in the universe. But that's not all. We've also got Susie Jimenez, Brad Fenson, Melissa Bachman, C-Dub, and that other guy. Virginia, a couple of states north of here in South Carolina, but my family spent a lot of time in South Carolina. We had a, a place in Myrtle Beach until uh, either Myrtle Beach outgrew us or we outgrew Myrtle Beach. Um, it's a bit more of a younger town now. We'd come here to play golf, and I've, I've always been a big, big fan of the South. Now, I started working with the South Carolina Waterfowl Association about 20 years ago. There were only two buildings here, I did a wild game cooking school. One of the hardest jobs I've had, basically it was nonstop. People would show up early afternoon, we would cook a bunch of different game, then I'd cook them dinner, then the next morning I had a gal, Sandra, who would cook them breakfast, and then we would have a fish cooking school, and then the next group would come in, and basically I just wore out a path between my cabin and the cooking school here, but isn't it funny how things work out the guy, David Wilicki, who you're going to meet shortly, introduced me to these other guys, and next thing you know, I'm on TV. Go figure, not a well-planned career path. Now, South Carolina Waterfowl Association has grown tremendously since then. It's a group effort that's spearheaded by David Wilicki. Behind me, this is going to be set up for a whole bunch of people. The, uh, the next time I see you, it's going to be a whole bunch of people over here. Um, enjoying great food. We've got oysters. There's all sorts of food. It's not just me. And tomorrow morning is the hunt. But first, I want you to check out Susie Jimenez. And now, I know I'm not supposed to play favorites. You know, your parents say don't play favorites, but you know they always had a favorite. Susie just happens to be mine. When you go down the streets of Mexico, you're going to find street food, which is so amazing. But you got to make sure when you have it, you have to have it traditionally. I think I've talked to a lot of Latinas and Latinos about this. When you have a taco, it's got to have its toppings. When you have a torta, it's got to be a certain way. Otherwise, you're going to have a really, really bad experience. So we got tortas today, and you can't just have your bun with meat on it. You've got to have the traditional toppings. So we use a Western slow cooker, and when I do that, I tend to cook a lot of the meat in advance so that I don't have to do this over and over and over. So we got a little bit of venison. Just gonna cook it all off right from the little like pouch, and we're gonna put the bun right down on that fat. And you're gonna caramelize the meat and then get all that fat on your bun. So you're gonna notice <laughs> the beautiful marks on this, right? It's nice and golden brown. and you're. You know what, guys? Everything in moderation. You can't always have greasy tortas, but sometimes you gotta have them. And a torta is not a torta without this. So it's time to assemble. This is the best part. I get really, really excited about this because you gotta add all these ingredients to it. I'm gonna grab my plate and I'm gonna show you how to do this. Now, while that's still getting crispy, I do wanna give you this important tip. Try to pickle some onions. And when I think about pickling, a lot of people think you have to pickle them overnight. My mom does this really, really fast. You get some white onions, pour some oregano on top of there, apple cider vinegar, and really what you're trying to do is just incorporate the flavor, but you don't want it to be pickled too much. So while this is pickling, we're going to start assembling our torta, right? So we got the bottom part of our bun. We're going to add some crema. And you guys can go with, with mayonnaise if you guys want. You can flavor your crema if you want with some chipotes. I'm just going to keep it nice and simple. And we're going to put some tomatoes on there. Lettuce. And our carne, which is our meat. Oh, yeah, guys. You're gonna send me a lot of emails about this. You're gonna be very appreciative of how delicious this is. So simple, but so good, right? And yes, it's going all over the plate, because guess what? You got so much fun that you're just gonna eat it with your hands. 
Oh yeah. Now we got the onions. And they go right on top. Make sure you get a little bit of that oregano in there. Man, this thing just got giant, right? And then we're gonna top this guy off. Hmm. Yeah, this is the love torta. You guys, have fun making this. Make sure you put all the ingredients I showed you. Otherwise, I'm telling you, it's not gonna be the same. We'll see you guys next time on The Sporting Shop. Camp Woody started in 1995. They had over 1,100 campers last year and they hope to have 2,500 this year with their expansion. My own son's been here a couple of times when he was younger and he still talks about how much fun he had. My wife sent him with soap, toothpaste, and a toothbrush, none of which were ever used. When I picked him up after camp, he couldn't stay awake to the end of the driveway, and when I got him to a hotel room, I sent him to the shower and went ahead and threw his clothes away. No reason for them to make the trip back west. Camp Leopold is a school year camp that teaches kids about land and natural resource conservation. Put the phones, tablets, and laptops away it's time to learn firsthand what nature is all about. To learn more about how to get your son or you involved with the great happenings at Camp Woody, check out scwa.org. More to come from South Carolina, Brad Fenson, Melissa Bachman, C-Dub, and Buddy Topher. So one of the things that I do around the country is I do these little presentation, demonstration type things. And tonight, for the opening night, of, night before opening day of waterfowl season, second half in South Carolina, I'm here at South Carolina Waterfowl Association and I've got a whole bunch of stuff. I've got deer, duck, wild turkey, antelope, and a whole bunch of fish. And the whole plan is to cook it really quickly. It's not a cooking school, it's an eating school. And the reason that I cut everything up into one or two bite pieces is, as I'm doing the demo, as I'm cooking this stuff, I wanna do it as fast as I can so that I'm not spending a whole lot of time chopping stuff up. It's already chopped, it's user friendly, and again, these guys don't really care about how it gets to them as long as it gets to them. It's about eating and having a great time here at South Carolina Waterfowl. Next up is a guy who hunts and fishes and cooks more than anyone I know, Brad Fenson. Well, we're continuing with deer camp this week and we got some incredible yearling whitetail dough to cook up. We're gonna try to eat up the whole deer while we're in camp this week. Today we're gonna do some backstraps and tenderloins and we're gonna have one of the landowners over for dinner. So we wanna do it up nice. Of course, we don't always have everything we want when we're in camp. It's not like home where we have a cupboard full of goodies or too much stuff. So I had to do some searching and we made up a, a nice little marinade here. We've got some olive oil, lemon juice, some seasoned pepper, soy sauce, and some sriracha. And then I chopped up a couple cloves of garlic too and put it in there. So that should give it lots of flavor and a bit of moisture. And we're gonna do it up on the pellet grill later tonight. With our marinade, we want to use the olive oil and stuff because it'll help brown it up when it's on the grill tonight. You can see how nice and clean that is, but you don't want to overpower it with flavor. We want to be able to taste that deer. All right, we prepped our backstraps and tenderloins this afternoon with the hopes that we'd get a deer today, and we did. We got another nice Montana whitetail buck hanging in the tree outside, which will give us more great eating for the rest of the week. Now it's time to get these bad boys on the Camp Chef pellet grill. I'm going to put the tenderloins up top to keep a close eye on them. To ensure proper cooking, insert thermometer probe. There we go. Now we can monitor the temperature and make sure everything's done perfectly. All right, we're making a fruit sauce to go with our deer backstraps. Lots of people would make a wine reduction or some type of gravy, or you can even stuff your uh, roast and stuff with uh, different fruit and vegetables onions but we're going to actually use some green grapes and uh, if you've had chardonnay wine or a wine reduction with meat you'll understand why the grapes would work well whether they're green or red this is what we have in deer camp so we're just going to cook these down a little bit all right we've cooked those grapes and you can see they're kind of turned opaque we're going to add about a quarter cup of sugar 
and about a quarter cup of whiskey. You can use bourbon or rye whiskey or even some rum if you wanted, but the whiskey works very well. All right, we finished up our back straps out on the grill. A little bit of smoke done perfectly. It's extremely tender. And then I'll just grab some of that fruit and whiskey reduction over the top. There it is. A little bit of the sauce. There it is. Fresh whitetail right from deer camp. It's well before sunup on opening day and the hunters all gather around to get information about how today's hunt's going to go and to get a safety briefing. One of the overall goals of South Carolina Waterfowl is to teach young people the importance of gun safety. My plan is to head out a little later after everyone else has left their blinds. Where each group is hunting is determined by the SCWA staff. Everything here is like a well-oiled machine and each party is accompanied by a trained guy. You know, listening to the sound of shotgun blasts and watching ducks fall from the sky is a, a beautiful thing. I'm hoping there are a few left when I go out with my friends David Walecki and Charlie Roundtree soon. So, you know, we're very fortunate to have Melissa Bachman from Winchester Deadly Passion right here on the Sporting Chef Show. And here she is. absolutely love hunting whitetails from a ground blind. You're eye level with the deer, you've got great shot opportunities, and it can be amazing when you're out decoying them. But one of the things that you really need to keep in mind is scent control when you're on the ground. You've got big, mature whitetails, 15, 18, 20 yards from you, so now is more important than ever to make sure that you're spraying all your gear down before you ever head out. This includes your release, your clothing, your backpack, and also your ground blind. One of the things a lot of people forget is they put up a ground blind and they wonder why deer always notice that the ground blind is there. First, you need to make sure that you're really taking a lot of time to blend that ground blind in and brush it in. Once you've got it all brushed in, I like to take a bottle of Scent Killer Gold and thoroughly spray down that entire blind. This way you don't have any of that smell from the blind and also do your chairs as well. It can make a big difference. And the last thing I like to do, well, if you're hunting during the rut, I like to put a decoy out in front of my blind. What that decoy does is take all the deer's attention and focus it right to the decoy. With that said, you need to make sure you're also spraying your decoy down and using attractant scents as well. I like to hang key wicks around the area and also put some scent right at the decoy's hawks. When you combine all these things together, you can find great success out hunting out of the ground blind for whitetails and hopefully have some deer right in close. You know, we're just barely getting started. Coming up next, we've got C-Dub and Buddy and a whole lot more right here on The Sporting Chef. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. Now it's time for me to shoot a duck or two. Got him in the ass, a little, I'm getting closer. Oh. Sun was in my eyes. He's used to shooting those mallards. What? Well, these are the shells that David says you can't miss with. I mean, they're six shots. Ah! That one, that one slowed down for me. That was a can of corn. Wait, right here, right. Too far behind that. Sorry, guys. He dropped his leg. Is he down? He's down. Huh? Did he go down? Scotty, I knew you, you killed him. I never down. doubted you. You, get, you <laughs> had him all the way. <laughs> no, good girl. Good girl, Tad. Good oh, girl. Uh huh. He is. Pick him up. No. Yeah, yeah. All right, one more though. All right, this next guy, C Dub. He does it all. Game warden truck driver, cast iron expert, had his own show on PBS, and we got him now. Here's C-Dub. 
it's always nice to have something in your pack to give you that quick boost of energy or just to have something to eat without going down and buying stuff in the store that's uh, full of preservatives and who knows what. So we're going to make what we call apple butter bars. We've got some oats, sugar, and a little flour, a little salt in here. We've melted a bunch of butter and we're just going to mix this up. So we want about half of our mixture in our Dutch oven and I'm just going to press this out in a nice layer. We want to use one whole jar of this and about half of the other one. Make uh, that layer of apple butter over my bottom layer. Kind of sprinkle it with my hands and then we'll pat it down and bake these. Our charcoal is just about ready. Okay, we're ready to go. Apple butter bars headed for the Dutch or for the fire pan. Now I can tell by the smell that our apple butter bars are ready. So let's take a quick look. Our apple butter bars are ready. We're gonna let them cool for four to five hours and then we'll cut them. They'll be ready to go put in your backpack. I'm telling you, I'm sold on the ring eggs. I'm still not gonna shoot them at home, but I'm sold on them here. Get up, get up. Ah. <laughs> I'm a bagologist, boy. I'm a bagologist. Oh. Sorry, Jimmy, I got him. That's it. Just trying not to get too uh, All that pressure was burned. That is a beautiful, great canvas bag. Look at that. Man. The king of ducks, baby. That's you, man. That's you. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you do miss, considering how many ducks you shoot every year, you got to feel really bad about yourself, don't you? I don't want to outshoot my guests. Now, so I try to purposely miss. When I miss, it's usually on purpose. And I, I know you said that you shot that last dog, duck, but I noticed the dog hadn't moved. Is that a well? Is that I'm an waiting. indication? I'm is waiting. he is he waiting uh, is he waiting for him to pile up or what? Oh, you know, it's, it's, you know Tide doesn't like to hog the camera. You know, I'm talking. <laughs> she's just she's a lady. She, she is a lady. To tell her to go. She's gonna wait for you to stop talking, uh, and then she'll say, finger, "Now can I? Finger. I think you should yeah. shoot him again." Great, right. coming in on the left. Get him. It's my birthday tomorrow. You think I ought to be able to shoot one day? Right? <laughs> they should give you one on your birthday, an extra <laughs> bonus, bonus bird. Bonus bird, bird man. Bring the bird over here for y'all, and I'll go pick those boots for that. You know, Buddy's no stranger to shooting ducks. I've been with Buddy shooting ducks in Mexico and Texas, and as much as it hurts me to say it, he doesn't miss all that much. Here's Buddy. God, I can't tell you how much of that pimento cheese I ate. A little earlier, I went and videoed smoking these uh, jalapenos. These are some big monster ones that on that smoke vault. Well, this is what I ended up doing with it. That's jack cheese, some Miracle Whip, and then I put about a dozen of those seeded smoked jalapenos in there. And I know people say, ah, oh, Miracle Whip, Miracle Whip, blah, 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 blah. Well, i tell you, if you don't use Miracle Whip, then what you want to do is put some sweet pickle relish in there. You eat that with that bread, with some sausage or whatever. It's all good. The other one is extra sharp cheddar. I use mayonnaise in there with this one. The other thing I put was chipotle peppers. You can see how this spreads on there. Nice little spread. I think this one here, I think that's that's gonna be good with some uh, pasta. All right, we're on to something different next time. Coming up next, we've got a big announcement. So don't go anywhere unless it's to get a glass of Michael David wine. So, 
Welcome back to the show. And I mentioned that there was going to be a big announcement. And that announcement is that the Dead Meat Show is back. It'll be back this fall. We've got a bunch of new shows. We're going to some very cool places to meet some interesting people and uh, and harvest uh, critters that you don't normally think about eating. Special thanks today to the South Carolina Waterfowl Association and Dave Willicki. Um, big, big deal. Love this place, been a big supporter for years. As I mentioned, my son went to camp here and the things that they've done for this area are just, uh, it's, it's hard to describe how good this organization is. Um, also, the other people that participated in the show, we've got Susie Jimenez, Brad Fenson, Melissa Bachman, C-Dub, and as always, Buddy, and we appreciate you supporting our sponsors because without them, well, I wouldn't be duck hunting here today. I'm Scott Layseth, the Sporting Chef, and we will see you next time.